Section 4 of Chapter 2, Polynomial and Rational Functions. We have seen some of these already. These are common functions, but now we're going to talk about them as polynomial and rational functions. Objectives. The student will be able to graph and identify properties of polynomial functions. The student will be able to calculate polynomial regression using a calculator. The student will be able to graph and identify properties of rational functions. The student will be able to solve applications, word problems, of polynomial and rational functions. A polynomial function is a function that can be written in the form Okay, now what is this? This is complicated, but you can think of it as a sum of ax to the n's. After all, there's only one variable, x, so it's a polynomial in one variable. So we've got here a sum of ax to the n's, and if that's all you have in it, then it's a polynomial function. For n, a non-negative integer called the degree of a polynomial. Remember that the degree of a polynomial function in x is just the highest power on x. The domain of a polynomial function is the set of all real numbers. So here's a fun fact, and when we're not talking about the theory, and it you know doesn't seem like, oh yeah, of course, you'll have a problem on an exam like, here's a function, what's its domain, and people freeze up. But if it's, poly if it's polynomial function, be it constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic, the domain is the set of all reals. A polynomial of degree zero is a constant. Okay, so take your favorite constant. Okay, how about cinco? Well, that is 5x to the zero. It's zero degree. And we could think of it as a sum of ax to the n's. And it's just one ax to the n. And the exponent on x is 0, so it's degree 0. A polynomial of degree 1 is a linear function. A polynomial of degree 2 is a quadratic function. So by now, you've already experienced the cognitive dissonance of this root quad, which means 4, referring to uh, second degree function. Another definition. A definition of odd polynomial. A polynomial is odd if it only contains odd powers of x, even if it only contains even powers of x. Let's look at some shapes of some even and odd polynomials. Look for some of the following properties. Okay, so we're going to look at a lot of uh, polynomial functions. Actually, most of them won't be e even or odd, but they will, of course, be of even or odd degree. Look for some of the following properties. Symmetry, number of x-intercepts, number of local maxima slash minima, that is, peaks and valleys, and what happens as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. 
as x goes infinitely to the right or as x goes infinitely to the left. And let's take this opportunity to call this by its other name or description. x goes to infinity. What does that mean? It just means that x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it there's nothing that's keeping it from getting bigger than any number you want to name. We say that x increases x increases without bound. x increases without bound. x is going to infinity. Okay, so here's a function f. It is odd, of odd degree, I should say. And let's see, does it have symmetry? An odd function does, but this does not, okay? No symmetry. It doesn't have x-axis symmetry. If it did, it wouldn't even be a function. It doesn't have y-axis symmetry. It doesn't have origin symmetry. There's no symmetry. Number of x-axis intercepts, 1. Number of local maxima or minima, 1. There's no peak or valley, so none. What happens as x goes to infinity or negative infinity? Well, of course, this arrow indicates that the graph goes infinitely up and to the left. So as it goes infinitely to the left, it goes infinitely up. And as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to, we indicate that with an arrow, symbolically, f of x goes to infinity. And as x goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to, well, as we go infinitely to the left, you know, we've got an arrow here indicating that as the graph goes infinitely to the left, it goes infinitely down. So f of x goes to negative infinity. Let's uh, look at this. We've got a graph. What about symmetry? Does it have symmetry? Doesn't have x, x axis symmetry. Again, it wouldn't even be a function if it did. Uh, it doesn't have y-axis symmetry. You can't fold it across the y-axis and have it land on itself. But there is a kind of symmetry here, origin symmetry. And so um, if you want to think of it in terms of folds, you could fold the graph along the x-axis and then fold it along the y-axis, both in turn, in either order, turns out, and the graph would land on itself. Uh, or another way to see that this graph has origin symmetry, origin symmetry, is that you could take any point on the graph, you know, there's a point right there. Maybe it's the point two five, two four, maybe. You could take any point on the graph, you can go to the origin, the object of symmetry, take any point on the graph, go to the origin, go same distance, same direction beyond it, and you would have another point on the graph. And that's true no matter what point you pick. So that's another way to see this has origin symmetry. 
number of x-intercepts is 3. Number of local maxima and minima. These two words together, you know, peaks and valleys, put them together and you could call them extrema. Love in the Latin, extrema, and there are two. We have a peak and we've got a valley. Okay, so two extrema. As x goes to infinity, g of x goes to infinity also. As x goes to negative infinity, well, graph goes infinitely down and to the left. As x goes to negative infinity, g of x also goes to negative infinity. And so here we have an odd function. And it has origin symmetry. And you may remember that those two things always go together, right? Now, you, this third degree function, if you zoomed out and you couldn't see all of the interesting behavior, then you might think that it's just the graph of a line. Because the graph of a third degree function looks like the graph of a first degree function but with an extra blip in it. Right? You, here's you have a first degree. degree function like the one we just saw earlier. Symmetry. Graph of x. Well, there's no y-axis symmetry. You know, if there a, were an extra an blip in that graph, that could function. be the graph of a third degree Aspires function. Aspires to have origin symmetry. But this one doesn't. It's not as if you could take any point in the graph, go to the origin, and go same distance, same direction beyond it, and get another point on the graph. Let's take this point here, 0, 1. Go to the origin, go same distance, same direction beyond it, and you don't get another point on the graph. So symmetry for h of x here is none. number of x-intercepts. Well, looks like one, two, three, four, five. So five x-intercepts, which is the same as the degree of the function. How many extrema do we have? Well, here's a peak. And a valley. And a peak. And a valley. So there are four extrema. As x goes to infinity, h of x goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, h of x goes to negative infinity. Okay, we could actually summarize that with a little end behavior graph.
Now, this 5th degree function, you look at its behavior and it kind of is like that of a third degree function. Remember f of our g of x, but with an extra blip in it. So, you know, if you here had is our this first extra blip, even degree which means function. what? Here's one more degree function, min and one more <laughs> max. You know, so put an extra blip and in And what about symmetry? Well, there's no and you could have graph of a symmetry fifth degree function like g of, like h of um, x. There is kind of symmetry about the line x equals one, or there appears to be. So kind of. Okay, so there's line symmetry. Not point, not symmetry about a point like with the odd functions or some, well, all odd functions, one, only one of which we saw earlier. But here's line symmetry about the vertical line x equals 1. Number of x-axis inter intercepts? There is no x-intercept, okay? Now that's something we never had for an odd degree function. Number of local max and min? Well, there is one min right there. So just one. The vertex of the parabola. And as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, big F of x, well, as x goes to infinity, big F goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, big F goes to positive infinity. Okay, so let's write that in a very clear way. As x goes to or approaches negative infinity, that is if, as we go infinitely to the left, big F of x not to be confused with little f of x from earlier, big F of x approaches infinity. Here's a fourth degree. Does it have symmetry? No. You couldn't fold this al along the y-axis and have it land on itself. It's not happening for big G. Number of x-axis intercepts, it's actually two, right? So there are fewer x-intercepts than there are than there is degree. Of course, we saw that in the last one too, and there was no x-intercept. Number of local maxima and minima. There's a min, there's a max, there's a min, now that has happened pretty commonly. The number of extrema, maxima and minima, are one less, is one less than the degree. What happens as x goes to infinity? Well, big G of x also goes to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, big G of x goes to infinity. As we go infinitely to the left, we also go infinitely up. If you zoom out on this and look at the end behavior, which in a way we just described with our, you know, what, is, what does big G of x do as x goes to plus or minus infinity, the graph would appear to be that of a quadratic function, like big F. And so big F 
a, a quadratic, a parabola with an extra blip in it. So a second degree with the extra blip could be the graph of a fourth degree. Here's a sixth degree. And the sixth degree, a fourth degree with an extra blip. You know, throw an extra blip in there. That is one more min and one more max. Could be, I don't want to make it look like it's failing the vertical line test, but my, I mean to draw something that still is a function, graph of a function. A fourth degree with an extra blip could be a sixth degree. Symmetry? No. Again, an even function, or an even degreed function, aspires to have y-axis symmetry, but this one doesn't. X intercepts IC4 fewer than the degree. Number of local min and max. Well, I think, again, it's going to be one fewer, one less than, one fewer than the degree. Because there's a min, there's a max, and a valley, and a peak, and a valley, and a peak. Peak, a pink peak. Five extrema. By the way, those are also called turning points. Because if you're, you know, driving left or right, what would you do? You would turn left, and then you turn right. And then you would turn left, and then you would turn right, and then you would turn left. You would have turned five times, so we would say there are five turning points. Uh, another way to say there are five extrema. As x goes to infinity, big H of x goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, Big H of X goes to negative or to positive infinity, I should say. Observations. For an odd polynomial, the graph is symmetric about the origin. So let's take H of X and remove the constant from it so that all of the powers of x are odd, making it by the definition given earlier an odd function. The result is a graph with origin symmetry. The graph starts negative and ends positive for an odd function odd polynomial function, or vice versa, depending on whether the lead coefficient is positive or negative. So if negative, okay, the lead coefficient here is negative 1, unlike this positive 1 up here, it's going to start positive and end up negative. Either way, a polynomial of degree n crosses the x-axis at least once. If it's odd, um, if it's odd, this is not true in general, but for odd, polynomial of degree n crosses at least once and at most n times.
What if you have an even? Graph is symmetric about the y-axis. The graph starts negative and ends positive, or starts and ends positive, depending on whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So, and we've seen that. We've seen a negative negative. y equals negative x squared, okay? Starts negative, ends negative. Or starts and ends positive if you have a positive lead coefficient, like 1. y equals 1 x squared, the old quadratic parent function. Starts positive ends positive. Either way, a polynomial of degree n crosses the x-axis at most n times. It may or may not cross at all. Right? We had uh, a function, I believe it was big F of x, and it did not even touch the x-axis. Okay? It was even degree, and that can happen for an even degree, not an odd degree. Characteristics of polynomials in general. Graphs of polynomials are continuous. You can sketch the graph without lifting your pencil from the paper. Graphs of polynomials have no sharp corners. They're smooth curves. Graphs of polynomials usually have turning points, which is a point that separates an increasing portion of the graph from a decreasing portion of the graph, also known as an extremum. A polynomial of degree n can have at most n linear factors, right? Something like x minus 1. That is a linear factor, a first degree factor. By the factor theorem, it will have um, at most n zeros, at most n x-intercepts. A polynomial of degree n may intersect the x-axis fewer than n times. We've seen that. That will get it done for the first objective of 2.4.